Hello everybody, welcome to the digital lesson. Today in our lesson, we are going to learn about service activities in India. In the context of services, I would like to focus on the attitude that one needs to develop towards services in order to become an active contributing citizen and community member through the services that we provide. Now, what is a service? Let us see. Look at this picture. Now, a mother cooks food for the family at home. Now, look at the next picture. A chef cooking food at a restaurant. Both are cooking food in these pictures. Both are providing services. In the first case, service is to provide something. In the first case, service is to do something out of love or devotion. In the second case, service is to earn money for livelihood. Let us see some more examples. Service to mankind. Social service. Service to the nation. What happens when a municipality worker does not attend to his duties when the drainage gets blocked in your locality. You may see something like this. The municipality worker provides a great service to the mankind. Even at the risk of his life. Now let us think for a while, what are their living standards? What are their income levels? Have you ever thought of? Don't you think they deserve the kind of respect as other service people do. Another aspect I would like to focus is one's commitment towards the services. What happens if a driver does not perform his duties with commitment? Obviously, accidents occur. Similarly, a doctor, teacher, all the services crucially important for human existence. Now let us move into the lesson. Broadly we divide occupations into three types, primary, secondary and tertiary. Agriculture, animal husbandry, mining, fishing, forestry are called primary activities because they are essential for the human existence. Secondary activities both small scale and uh, large scale industries are secondary activities constitute manufacturing industries both small scale and large scale. Banking, finance, transportation, communication which help agriculture and industries are called tertiary activities. Tertiary sector is called service sector because they provide services rather than end products. Tertiary sector is the portion of the economy that provides services, therefore it is called service sector. Service sector forms the backbone of social and economic development of a country. Countries based on service activities are more advanced rather than countries based on agriculture and industries. 
Examples of countries based on United States, Japan, United Kingdom. Children, look at these pictures. What do you see here? Now, what did you observe? These are agriculture and industrial activities. Now, observe this video. You can see communication services. Banking services. Medical services. Transportation services roadways, railways and airways, internet services. Now children, what type of activities did you observe? Are they producing any goods or commodities? In what way they are different from agricultural and industrial activities? Think for a while. These are agricultural and industrial products. By this we can understand that agricultural and industrial activities produce products whereas service activities do not. They produce services. There are three sectors of economy as we have learnt in our earlier chapters. The primary sector constitutes agriculture. Farming, mining, fisheries. Secondary sector constitutes industries both small scale and large scale. And the third sector which is known as service sector or tertiary sector constitutes services. Now look at these pictures, children read the slide.
Now you have watched the pictures of a few people engaged in services. Now children, make a note to discuss these questions later after you go to the classroom. What kind of services does a doctor provide? What type of service does the woman do in the shop? From where does she buy grocery items for the shop? What kind of organizations need accounting services? What services does a van driver provide to earn money? Discuss these questions later when you go to the classroom. Now let us discuss on some important points on service activities. People engaged in service activities produce services. Service activities help people and business organizations in the form of specialized services. Service here refers to the nature of work done to earn money. Now children, let us view some pictures of essential services required for agriculture and industries. Financial services, communication services, transportation services, trade, sales outlets. Can you name some other services? Children, try to list out some other services required for agriculture and industries when you go back to your classroom. These are the pictures related to the activities which help agriculture and industries. Banks collect deposits and give loans to people and business organizations. Communication services help agriculture and industrial producers to check the prices of goods in each bazaar and sell their goods on profit basis. Transportation services help agriculture and industrial products to reach the markets. You can see wholesale market where producers sell their products to traders. Car dealers buy cars from producers and sell to the consumers. Trading is also a service activity where traders are neither producers nor consumers. They buy and sell commodities to earn money through this work. Now children, please make a note and discuss later when you go back to the classroom. Explain the role of the traders in the business activities. List out a few essential services required for agriculture and industrial activities. Differentiate the service activities 
from agriculture and industrial activities. Now look at some more pictures related to sales outlets where service activities are performed. This is a picture of retail market. Wholesale market. Retail shop, supermarket. Children, try to make out the difference between a retail shop and supermarket. Discuss later when you go back to the classroom. Children, look at this table. This table shows the categories of services and the people engaged in the respective services. Based on the table, people engaged in the category of education are administrators, teachers, accountants, etc., doctors, nurses security people etc are engaged in the category of health and medical services wholesale traders retail traders marketing personnel etc are engaged in trade police revenue judiciary departments etc are engaged in public administrative services bankers money lenders collection agents etc are engaged in financial activities. Tailors, hairdressers, servants, etc. are engaged in personal services. IT professionals, movie and TV artists are people who are engaged in communication and entertainment services. children make a note and later when you go back to the classroom discuss which categories of services do you utilize more in your daily life now children let us see some more examples of services required by people and business organizations Transportation services that help people and business organizations. Airways, railways, communication services that help people and business organization. Health and medical services.
children let us discuss on the important points about importance of the service sector development of a country needs expansion of infrastructure facilities for example transportation communication etc infrastructure facilities not only increase employment opportunities but also result in economic growth of the country let us watch a video to know the importance of infrastructure facilities and what is the driving force behind infrastructure facilities A nation in overdrive, the world's fastest growing free market democracy, an emerging global hub of knowledge and technology, a booming economy backed by internationally competitive industrial sectors. This surging growth and development taking place across the economy has thrown up new challenges and opportunities, particularly in the domain of infrastructure. What is the driving force that underlines this constantly growing need for bigger, better infrastructure? Over the last three years, India's economic growth has been 8% currently. This is one of the fastest growth rates in the world. In terms of US dollars, this translates to a growth rate as high as 13% per annum. From a mere 5 million landlines in 1991, the country has reached a point where 5 million cellular connections are added every month. The investment opportunities in this sector are backed by a national telecom policy that aims at encouraging private and foreign investments and overseen by an independent regulator, the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India or TRI. In the auto industry, the turnover has grown from $12 billion in 2002-2003 to 19 billion dollars in 2004-2005. To attract the investments needed to expand airport facilities, the government has amended the AAI Act to provide the legal framework for the privatization of airports. Moreover, it has announced 100% tax exemption for airport projects for a period of 10 years. The new foreign trade policy envisages doubling India's share in global exports in the next five years to touch the 150 billion US dollar mark. It is time for action and a master plan is needed to face the challenges thrown up by the sector. India's investment requirements in infrastructure are enormous and projected to rise from 4.5% of the GDP during the 10th plan to 7.5% of the GDP during the 11th plan. The resources of the government are not enough to bridge the gap. Such big ticket infrastructure calls for very large amounts of foreign direct investment. Fortunately, the stage is already set to facilitate this. Fifteen years of reforms have created a level playing field for foreign investors and as mentioned earlier, India is currently viewed as one of the most attractive destinations for foreign capital. Now let's recap. Growth of Indian economy is called service sector led growth. That means growth of Indian economy is called service sector led growth. Service sector is the driving force of Indian economy. Share of service sector in GDP is 57 percent. 
this shows both agriculture and industry together this shows both agriculture and industrial GDP is not more than 50 percent. Share of service sector in employment is 25 percent to 30 percent. This shows one fourth of the population depends upon service sector. Contribution of service sector in exports is 77 percent. Service sector expands job opportunities due to high economic growth that resulted in better income and tendency to spend more on education, entertainment, tourism, etc. Activity Read the paragraph number 10 on importance of the service sector and some challenges and comment. Collect the information about people involved in different service activities and identify the category of service they are engaged and the type of organization they are working for in the form of a table. Discuss. Explain the importance of service activities for human existence. Children, make a note, try to discuss on these questions later on when you go back to the classroom. How do service activities contribute for economic development of the country? Which service do you prefer to choose in your future and why? The prosperity of a country directly depends upon agriculture and industries. Agriculture however depends upon credit, market, transportation facilities and industries depend upon power, management, marketing facilities, transportation facilities like railways, roadways, airways, etc. All these services collectively constitute the infrastructure of the country. The expansion of these services is essential for the development of the economy. Thank you.